A wooden boomerang A boomerang is a thrown tool, typically constructed as a flat airfoil, that is designed to spin about an axis perpendicular to the direction of its flight. A returning boomerang is designed to return to the thrower. It is well known as a weapon used by some Aboriginal Australian peoples for hunting. Boomerangs have been historically used for hunting, as well as sport and entertainment. They are commonly thought of as an Australian icon, and come in various shapes and sizes. A boomerang is a throwing stick with certain aerodynamic properties, traditionally made of wood, but boomerang-like devices have also been made from bones. Modern boomerangs used for sport may be made from plywood or plastics such as ABS, polypropylene, phenolic paper, or carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Boomerangs come in many shapes and sizes depending on their geographic or tribal origins and intended function. Many people think of a boomerang as the Australian type, although today there are many types of more easily usable boomerangs, such as the cross stick, the pinwheel, the tumble stick, the boomer bird, and many other less common types. An important distinction should be made between returning boomerangs and non-returning boomerangs. Returning boomerangs fly, and are examples of the earliest heavier-than-air human-made flight. A returning boomerang has two or more airfoil wings arranged so that the spinning creates unbalanced aerodynamic forces that curve its path so that it travels in an ellipse, returning to its point of origin when thrown correctly. While a throwing stick can also be shaped overall like a returning boomerang, it is designed to travel as straight as possible so that it can be aimed and thrown with great force to bring down the game. Its surfaces are therefore symmetrical and not with the airfoils that give the returning boomerang its characteristic curved flight. The most recognizable type of the boomerang is the L-shaped returning boomerang, while non-returning boomerangs, throwing sticks were used as weapons, returning boomerangs have been used primarily for leisure or recreation. Returning boomerangs were also used to decoy birds of prey, thrown above the long grass to frighten game birds into flight and into waiting nets. Modern returning boomerangs can be of various shapes or sizes. Just like the hunting boomerang of the Aboriginal Australians, the Valari also did not return to the thrower but flew straight. Boomerangs used in competitions have specially designed air foiling mechanism to enable return, but the hunting boomerangs are meant to float straight and hit the target. Valaris are made in many shapes and sizes. The history of the Valari is rooted in ancient times and evidences can be found in Tamil Sangam literature Purananuru. The usual form consists of two limbs set at an angle, one is thin and tapering while the other is rounded and is used as a handle. Valaris are usually made of iron which is melted and poured into molds, although some may have wooden limbs tipped with iron. Alternatively, the limbs may have lethally sharpened edges, special daggers are known as katari, double-edged and razor-sharp, may be attached to some velari. The origin of the term is uncertain. One source asserts that the term entered the language in 1827, adapted from an extinct Aboriginal language of New South Wales, Australia, but mentions a variant, Womer Rang, which it dates to 1798. The first recorded encounter with a boomerang by Europeans was at Farm Cove, in December 1804, when a weapon was witnessed. During a tribal skirmish, the white spectators were justly astonished at the dexterity and incredible force with which a bent. Edged wadi resembling slightly a Turkish semiter, was thrown by Bungary, a native distinguished by his remarkable courtesy. The weapon, thrown at 20 or 30 yards, 18 or 27 meters, distance, twirled round in the air with astonishing velocity and alighting on the right arm of one of his opponents. Actually rebounded to a distance not less than 70 or 80 yards, 64 or 73 meters, leaving a horrible contusion behind, and exciting universal admiration. The Sydney Gazette and New South Wales Advertiser, December 23, 1804. David Collins listed Womer Rang as one of eight Aboriginal names of clubs in 1798, but was probably referring to the Woomera, which is actually a spear thrower. An anonymous 1790 manuscript on Aboriginal languages of New South Wales reported Boomer writ as the scimitar. In 1822, it was described in detail and recorded as a Boomar rang in the language of the Turawal people of the Georges River near Port Jackson. The Turawal used other words for their hunting sticks but used boomerang to refer to a returning throw stick. Distribution of boomerangs in Australia prior to European contact with modern state borders added Australian Aboriginal boomerangs boomerangs were, historically, used as hunting weapons, percussive musical instruments, battle clubs, fire starters, decoys for hunting waterfowl, and as recreational play toys. The smallest boomerang may be less than 10 centimetres from tip to tip, and the largest over 180 centimetres in length. 
Tribal boomerangs may be inscribed or painted with designs meaningful to their makers. Most boomerangs seen today are of the tourist or competition sort, and are almost invariably of the returning type. Depictions of boomerangs being thrown at animals, such as kangaroos, appear in some of the oldest rock art in the world, the indigenous Australian rock art of the Kimberley region, which is potentially up to 50,000 years old. Stencils and paintings of boomerangs also appear in the rock art of West Papua, including on Bird's Head Peninsula and Kamana, likely dating to the last glacial maximum. When lower sea levels led to cultural continuity between Papua and Arnhem Land in northern Australia. The oldest surviving Australian Aboriginal boomerangs come from a cache found in a peat bog in the weary swamp of South Australia and date to 10. 000 BC. Although traditionally thought of as Australian, boomerangs have been found also in ancient Europe, Egypt, and North America. There is evidence of the use of non-returning boomerangs by the Native Americans of California and Arizona, and inhabitants of southern India for killing birds and rabbits. Some boomerangs were not thrown at all, but were used in hand-to-hand -hand combat by indigenous Australians. Ancient Egyptian examples, however, have been recovered, and experiments have shown that they function as returning boomerangs. Hunting sticks discovered in Europe seem to have formed part of the Stone Age arsenal of weapons. One boomerang that was discovered in a Blazoa cave in the Carpathian Mountains in Poland was made of mammoth's tusk and is believed, based on AMS dating of objects found with it, to be about 30,000 years old. In the Netherlands, boomerangs have been found in Vlaardingen and Velsen from the 1st century BC. King Tutankhamun, the famous pharaoh of ancient Egypt, who died over 3,300 years ago, owned a collection of boomerangs of both the straight-flying and returning variety. Four boomerangs of the tomb of pharaoh Tutankhamun. These hardwood boomerangs could not return to their launcher due to their curvature unlike other boomerangs found in the tomb. No one knows for sure how the returning boomerang was invented, but some modern boomerang makers speculate that it developed from the flattened throwing stick. Still used by the Australian Aborigines and other indigenous peoples around the world, including the Navajo in North America. A hunting boomerang is delicately balanced and much harder to make than a returning one. The curving flight characteristic of returning boomerangs was probably first noticed by early hunters trying to tune their throwing sticks to fly straight. It is thought by some that the shape and elliptical flight path of the returning boomerang makes it useful for hunting birds and small animals, or that noise generated by the movement of the boomerang through the air. Or, by a skilled thrower, lightly clipping leaves of a tree whose branches house birds, would help scare the birds towards the thrower. It is further supposed by some that this was used to frighten flocks or groups of birds into nets that were usually strung up between trees or thrown by hidden hunters. In southeastern Australia, it is claimed that boomerangs were made to hover over a flock of ducks, mistaking it for a hawk, the ducks would dive away, toward hunters armed with nets or clubs. Aboriginal man with boomerang, Yen Demu, 2018 Traditionally, most boomerangs used by Aboriginal groups in Australia were non-returning. These weapons, sometimes called throw sticks or kylies, were used for hunting a variety of prey, from kangaroos to parrots, at a range of about 100 meters, a 2 kilogram non-returning boomerang could inflict mortal injury to a large animal. A throw stick thrown nearly horizontally may fly in a nearly straight path and could fell a kangaroo on impact to the legs or knees, while the long-necked emu could be killed by a blow to the neck. Hooked non-returning boomerangs, known as beaked kylies, used in northern central Australia, have been claimed to kill multiple birds when thrown into a dense flock. Throw sticks are used as multi-purpose tools by today's Aboriginal peoples, and besides throwing could be wielded as clubs, used for digging, used to start friction fires, and are sonorous when two are struck together. Recent evidence also suggests that boomerangs were used as war weapons. Sport boomerangs today, boomerangs are mostly used for recreation. There are different types of throwing contests, accuracy of return, Aussie round, trick catch, maximum time aloft, fast catch, and endurance. The modern sport boomerang is made of finished birch plywood, hardwood, plastic or composite materials and comes in many different shapes and colors. Most sport boomerangs typically weigh less than 100 grams, with MTA boomerangs often under 25 grams. Boomerangs have also been suggested as an alternative to clay pigeons in shotgun sports, where the flight of the boomerang better mimics the flight of a bird offering a more challenging target. The modern boomerang is often computerated designed with precision airfoils. The number of wings is often more than two as more lift is provided by three or four wings than by two. Among the latest inventions is a round-shaped boomerang, which is a different look but using the same returning principle as traditional boomerangs. 
This allows for safer catch for players. In 1992, German astronaut Ulf Merbold performed an experiment aboard Spacelab that established that boomerangs function in zero gravity as they do on Earth. French astronaut Jean-Francois Clairvoy aboard Mir repeated this in 1997. In 2008, Japanese astronaut Takao Doi again repeated the experiment on board the International Space Station. Boomerangs for sale at the 2005 Melbourne show beginning in the later part of the 20th century, there has been a bloom in the independent creation of unusually designed art boomerangs. These often have little or no resemblance to the traditional historical ones and on first sight some of these objects may not look like boomerangs at all. The use of modern thin plywoods and synthetic plastics have greatly contributed to their success. Designs are very diverse and can range from animal-inspired forms, humorous themes, complex calligraphic and symbolic shapes, to the purely abstract. Painted surfaces are similarly richly diverse. Some boomerangs made primarily as art objects do not have the required aerodynamic properties to return. A returning boomerang is a rotating wing. It consists of two or more arms, or wings, connected at an angle. Each wing is shaped as an airfoil section. Although it is not a requirement that a boomerang be in its traditional shape, it is usually flat. Boomerangs can be made for right or left-handed throwers. The difference between right and left is subtle. The plan form is the same but the leading edges of the aerofoil sections are reversed. A right-handed boomerang makes a counterclockwise, circular flight to the left while a left-handed boomerang flies clockwise to the right. Most sport boomerangs weigh between 70 and 110 grams, have a 250 to 350 mm wingspan and a 20 to 40 meters range. A falling boomerang starts spinning, and most then fall in a spiral. When the boomerang is thrown with high spin, a boomerang flies in a curved rather than a straight line. When thrown correctly, a boomerang returns to its starting point. As the wing rotates and the boomerang moves through the air, the airflow over the wings creates lift on both wings. However, during one half of each blade's rotation, it sees a higher airspeed, because the rotation tip speed, and the forward speed add, and when it is in the other half of the rotation, the tip speed subtracts from the forward speed. Thus if thrown nearly upright, each blade generates more lift at the top than the bottom. While it might be expected that this would cause the boomerang to tilt around the axis of travel, because the boomerang has significant angular momentum. The gyroscopic precession causes the plane of rotation to tilt about an axis that is 90 degrees to the direction of flight, causing it to turn. When thrown in the horizontal plane, as with a frisbee, instead of in the vertical, the same gyroscopic precession will cause the boomerang to fly violently, straight up into the air and then crash. Fast catch boomerangs usually have three or more symmetrical wings, whereas a long distance boomerang is most often shaped similar to a question mark. Maximum time aloft boomerangs mostly have one wing considerably longer than the other. This feature, along with carefully executed bends and twists in the wings help to set up an auto-rotation effect to maximize the boomerang's hover time in descending from the highest point in its flight. Some boomerangs have turbulators, bumps or pits on the top surface that act to increase the lift as boundary layer transition activators. Boomerangs are generally thrown in unobstructed, open spaces at least twice as large as the range of the boomerang. The flight direction, Left or right depends upon the boomerang, not the thrower. A right-handed or left-handed boomerang can be thrown with either hand, but throwing a boomerang with the wrong hand requires a throwing motion that many throwers find awkward. The following technique applies to a right-handed boomerang, the directions are mirrored for a left-handed boomerang. Different boomerang designs have different flight characteristics and are suitable for different conditions. The accuracy of the throw depends on understanding the weight and aerodynamics of that particular boomerang, and the strength, consistency and direction of the wind, from this. The thrower chooses the angle of tilt, the angle against the wind, the elevation of the trajectory, the degree of spin and the strength of the throw. A great deal of trial and error is required to perfect the throw over time. A properly thrown boomerang will travel out parallel to the ground, sometimes climbing gently, perform a graceful, anti-clockwise, circular or teardrop-shaped arc. Flatten out and return in a hovering motion, coming in from the left or spiraling in from behind. Ideally, the hover will allow a practiced catcher to clamp their hands shut horizontally on the boomerang from above and below, sandwiching the center between their hands. The grip used depends on size and shape. Smaller boomerangs are held between finger and thumb at one end, while larger, heavier or wider boomerangs with one or two fingers wrapped over the top edge in order to induce a spin. The aerofoil-shaped section must face the inside of the thrower and the flatter side outwards. 
it is usually inclined outwards, from a nearly vertical position to 20 degrees or 30 degrees, the stronger the wind, the closer to vertical. The elbow of the boomerang can point forwards or backwards, or it can be gripped for throwing. It just needs to start spinning on the required inclination, in the desired direction, with the right force. The boomerang is aimed to the right of the oncoming wind. The exact angle depends on the strength of the wind and the boomerang itself. Left-handed boomerangs are thrown to the left of the wind and will fly a clockwise flight path. The trajectory is either parallel to the ground or slightly upwards. The boomerang can return without the aid of any wind, but even very slight winds must be taken into account however calm it may seem. Little or no wind is preferable for an accurate throw, light winds up to 3-5 to five knots are manageable with skill. If the wind is strong enough to fly a kite, then it may be too strong without a skilled thrower with a boomerang designed for stability and stronger winds. Gusty days are a great challenge, and the thrower must be keenly aware of the ebb and flow of the wind strength, finding appropriate lulls in the gust to launch their boomerang. A world record achievement was made on June 3, 2007 by Tim Lendrum and Aussie Round. Lendrum scored 96 out of 100, giving him a national record as well as an equal world record throwing an air made by expert boomerang maker Adam Carroll. In international competition, a World Cup is held every second year. As of 2017, teams from Germany and the United States dominated international competition. The individual world champion title was won in 2000, 2002, 2004, 2012, and 2016 by Swiss thrower Manuel Schütz. In 1992, 1998, 2006, and 2008 Friedeline Frost from Germany won the title. The team competitions of 2012 and 2014 were won by Boomergang. World champions were Germany in 2012 and in Japan in 2014 for the first time. Boomergang was formed by individuals from several countries, including the Colombian Alejandro Palacio. In 2016 USA became team world champion. Modern boomerang tournaments usually involve some or all of the events listed below in all disciplines the boomerang must travel at least 20 meters from the thrower. Throwing takes place individually. The thrower stands at the center of concentric rings marked on an open field. Events include, non-discipline record, smallest returning boomerang, Sadir Katan of Australia in 1997 with 48 mm long and 46 mm wide. This tiny boomerang flew the required 20 meters, before returning to the accuracy circles on March 22, 1997 at the Australian National Championships. A boomerang was used to set a Guinness World Record with a throw of 427. 2 meters by David Shumi on March 15, 2005 at Murray Recreation Ground, Australia. This broke the record set by Aaron Hemmings who threw an aerobie 406. 3 meters on July 14, 2003 at Fort Funston, San Francisco. Long distance boomerang throwers aim to have the boomerang go the furthest possible distance while returning close to the throwing point. In competition the boomerang must intersect an imaginary surface defined as an infinite vertical projection of a 40-meter line centered on the thrower. Outside of competitions, the definition is not so strict, and throwers may be happy simply not to walk too far to recover the boomerang. Long-distance boomerangs are optimized to have minimal drag while still having enough lift to fly and return. For this reason, they have a very narrow throwing window, which discourages many beginners from continuing with this discipline. For the same reason, the quality of manufactured long-distance boomerangs is often difficult to determine. Today's long-distance boomerangs have almost all an S or dash question mark shape and have a beveled edge on both sides. This is to minimize drag and lower the lift. Lift must be low because the boomerang is thrown with an almost total layover. Long-distance boomerangs are most frequently made of composite material, mainly fiberglass epoxy composites. The projection of the flight path of long-distance boomerang on the ground resembles a water drop. For older types of long-distance boomerangs, the first and last third of the flight path are very low, while the middle third is a fast climb followed by a fast ascent. Nowadays, boomerangs are made in a way that their whole flight path is almost planar with a constant climb during the first half of the trajectory and then a rather constant descent during the second half. From theoretical point of view, distance boomerangs are interesting also for the following reason for achieving a different behavior during different flight phases, the ratio of the rotation frequency to the forward velocity has a U-shaped function, I. E. Its derivative crosses zero. Practically, it means that the boomerang being at the furthest point has a very low forward velocity. The kinetic energy of the forward component is then stored in the potential energy. This is not true for other types of boomerangs, 
where the loss of kinetic energy is non-reversible. In Noongar language, Kylie is a flat curved piece of wood similar in appearance to a boomerang that is thrown when hunting for birds and animals. Kylie is one of the aboriginal words for the hunting stick used in warfare and for hunting animals. Instead of following curved flight paths, Kylies fly in straight lines from the throwers. They are typically much larger than boomerangs, and can travel very long distances. Due to their size and hook shapes, they can cripple or kill an animal or human opponent. The word is perhaps an English corruption of a word meaning boomerang taken from one of the Western desert languages, for example, the Warpiri word Carly. Trademarks of Australian companies using the boomerang as a symbol, emblem or logo proliferate, usually removed from Aboriginal context and symbolizing returning or to distinguish an Australian brand. Early examples included Bain's White Ant Exterminator, Webendorfer Brothers. Explosives, E. A. Adams Foods, and by the Boomerang Cigarette Papers Proprietary. Limited. Aboriginalia, including the boomerang, as symbols of Australia dates from the late 1940s and early 1950s and was in widespread use by a largely European arts, crafts and design community. By the 1960s, the Australian tourism industry extended it to the very branding of Australia, particularly to overseas and domestic tourists as souvenirs and gifts and thus Aboriginal culture. At the very time when Aboriginal people and culture were subject to policies that removed them from their traditional lands and sought to assimilate them into mainstream white Australian culture. Causing the stolen generations, Aboriginalia found an ironically nostalgic, entry point into Australian popular culture at important social locations, holiday resorts and in Australian domestic interiors. In the 21st century, souvenir objects depicting Aboriginal peoples, symbolism and motifs including the boomerang, from the 1940s 1970s, regarded as kitsch and sold largely to tourists in the first instance. Became highly sought after by both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal collectors and has captured the imagination of Aboriginal artists and cultural commentators. Thanks for watching.